have to be hard, guys. <laughs> oh, you're live. We are live. Not everyone is ready, but I'm ready. So that's all that counts. Hey, oh, how's it going, so Bitcoiners? It's CK here with a fantastic cast of Bitcoiners, <clears throat> bunch of Bitcoin experts, veterans, builders, drinkers, all the above. Um, I, I personally am drinking whiskey. It's been my, my drink of choice the last few weeks. And uh, yeah, excited for this week. We have a nice lineup of things to talk about. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can just kind of kick it off with Bitcoin 2021. I personally am very excited for Bitcoin 2021. I know several of the folks uh, in this chat are going to be attending at least four. I don't know. Maybe, maybe all six, who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, very excited. Uh, we're going to pass it over to Joe. Joe, what's going on in Bitcoin 2021 land? What's going on in Bitcoin in general? How's it going? Yo, uh, life is good. We're so pumped for the conference. We're like leaking out uh, little details about what's happening very slowly. I know it's kind of painful for everyone who wants to know more details, uh, but we did announce a new hotel partner this week, a ton of great uh, new speakers. And I do know for a fact on Monday, there's going to be a bombshell announcement and um, it's going to make everyone who's had, it's going to answer their number one question. Um, so whatever your number one question is, we're going to answer that on Monday. But anyway, with that being said, go to b.tc slash conference. You can get all the details again, June 4th and 5th in Miami. Uh, we got a price increase on April Fool's Day. So you might want to jump on it uh, before that happens. And uh, if you're in the market for a ticket, uh, use promo code Satoshi for 10% off. So uh, that's my product shill. I'm pumped. I'm excited. Number go up. I've got nine bush lights in front of me, CK. I'm going to do my best for everyone on the stream to do my part and crush all those cans for this stream. So that being said, I'm going to pass it to my good friend, Young Kaz. What's up, man? Oh, what's up? What is up? I'm on the beach in Miami right now. Oh my God. What a dog. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, you got your ticket book? Of course. I'll be there. Yeah. I'm glad to, I need hear to figure it, out where I'm going to stay. That's the next thing. Monday, you'll be able to triangulate and coordinate when that shit's going to happen. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So All right, uh, Jacob, Kaz. can you hear us? Wait, well, hey, before we go to Jacob, Kaz, why don't you introduce yourself? Everyone needs a proper introduction. <laughs> what a slack. Who are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who am I? What's so, up? Yeah. This is my Welcome third time. Third time on Bitcoin Magazine. Definitely the most fucked up I've been rolling into one. So excited to get this going. Uh, it's been a great week. Um, yeah. So work for Swan Bitcoin. Um, also do Down the Rabbit Hole Bitcoin podcast. And uh, I see the Meisters down here. So excited to get this chat rolling. All right. Sorry to rudely interrupt you, Jacob and Joe. Not a problem. He was asking so if he, I could hear him, and, and indeed I can hear him. Uh, what's up? Um, how are you guys? I admit, should I do an introduction of myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell yeah, us, yeah. tell us about yourself. Give us, okay. give us a tweet worth or the elevator pitch. All right. So um, I used to be a high school history teacher until I started investing in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, and after that. Um, I went into the open source hardware field. Um, after that, um, worked on distributed uh, software container systems. After that, I worked on actual shipping containers full of Bitcoin miners with drone energy. Uh, and presently, I actually consult pretty much like across the whole proof of stake space and also on some pure Bitcoin projects as well. Uh, so software developer, entrepreneur, a little bit of an investor, uh, having a freaking great time. Thank you for joining us, Jacob. That's awesome. Um, yeah, Jacob and I have had many great debates, uh, and debates with other folks on Twitter. So, uh, Jacob, welcome back to the show. Um, let's o jump over to Justin. Justin, welcome to the show. Who are you and, uh, what do you do in Bitcoin? Yo, yo. Uh, my name is Justin. Uh, it's a bummer. My camera's not working right now, but uh, I'm originally from the real estate industry, uh, got laid off in May. And uh, since then, 
I've been running a little podcast for family and friends called Bitcoin for Mom. And uh, the whole point is to explain Bitcoin to my mom and hopefully bring uh, some people along with us. And uh, actually, I'm originally from Miami. I have not purchased my Bitcoin 2021 ticket yet, but uh, I think I plan on coming. Justin, come on, man. You and your mom got to come to Bitcoin 2021. It's a no-brainer. But yeah, hey, the very, very first Bitcoin or crypto conference I ever went to I met a man by the name of Adam Meister and I've been listening to that guy's show for like two or three months at that point. So it was a pretty cool moment to meet Adam in person. Only person that was like even remotely relatable at the conference. It was was definitely a shit coin conference. Uh, But that was in uh, what, early 2018? Like very, very early. Yeah, Yeah, January. Adam, welcome to the show. How's it going? January January of 2018 in South San Francisco, if you guys go to disruptmeister.com, go to my archives. You can watch him on video making his first appearance ever on uh, in uh, YouTube crypto land or whatever. But yeah, I'm Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, the Disrupt Meister. Pound that freaking like button, baby. I'm going to bring this thing alive, baby. I'm alive. I'm from the city of death, Baltimore originally, but I'm in Miami right now and I'm loving it, baby, because we're free here. We can do whatever we want to do, but I got to go back up to Baltimore for Passover, but I will be back here for the event, June 4th and 5th, baby. I'm already on fire and baby, all I do is drink water. It's all pure, natural. All you guys drinking and drugging out there. No, 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 not the Meister. Pure freaking energy. So I love Bitcoin. Obviously, I've been buying this since 2013. I never sold a Bitcoin before. And maybe that's why I got so much freaking energy because I'm so freaking rich. Well, anyway, whatever I am, <laughs> it's been great. And I'm just excited to talk about it tonight and see Christian and all these other dudes who've been on my Friday show before. I'm on fire, baby. Take it away, Christian. Let's go. A- Adam is absolutely feeling it. And smash that like button. Uh, Yo, I'm fucking say- Jack too, CK. Let's go. <laughs> All right, dude. Joe's already three beers deep. Um, let's pass it over to uh, to my man. Keep it simple. Keep it simple is a veteran to the show. Always bring in the heat. Welcome back. What's up, guys? I don't. I I'm kind of disappointed you made me follow Adam. That that was. I can't. I can't compete with that. Uh, glad to be back. I always love. Um, I love you know talking with other Bitcoiners and getting on my uh, second tequila here. So I'm gonna keep up with Joe. I'm, I'm drinking Bush up. Light, so it's really not comparable, okay? Yeah, so four for me and nine or ten or whatever for you. Okay, Maybe fair enough, for me. fair enough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good math. All right, guys, I'm excited about this one. Uh, I know, I think Justin's coming, is going to leave and come back, but uh, this first topic kind of relates to, uh, you know, onboarding newbies. You know, I think Kiss, Adam, several folks here, Cass, have all been a part of bringing people into the Bitcoin fold. Uh, one of the things that Bitcoin Magazine has been putting out this week has been a five-part series about wallets and buying your first Bitcoin. The series is very unique because one, it is oriented towards newbies and beginners, but two, it has a heavy emphasis on KYC free and holding your own coins. So it's kind of like the, the cypherpunks uh, introduction to Bitcoin, how to buy Bitcoin, how to store Bitcoin uh, for a newbie. So uh, an interesting take on, uh, you know, how to onboard newbies. We don't have to necessarily talk about the guide on Bitcoin Magazine, although I recommend everyone check it out. Um, but I'm curious how you guys, what's your default way of onboarding a newbie? You know, uh, do you, you get them on a cash app? Do you get them on somewhere else? Do, do you recommend KYC free? Uh, let's let's go over to uh, to KISS. Kiss, what's like? What's your go-to? You you met someone doesn't own Bitcoin, but they're smart, they're honest. You want to talk to them about it. You're trying to get them on board. How do you do it? Um, well, it's it's very different than the way that I do it for myself. Um, I I push them towards, you know, like a cash app or um, some kind of exchange, some kind of regulated exchange. Just get a little bit, get it quick. Cash app is probably the fastest way to get it. Um, although not the cheapest. And then um, they just have to wet their beak a little bit. And then after that, uh, it really depends on the, the person. A lot of, you know, I'm sure all of us have been 
dealing with people that are brand new that want to, you know, get exposure. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's hard. I mean, being in this space for years and years, you really take for granted all the little things that have to um, build on each other, right? To be able to even interact with Bitcoin comfortably. And, uh, you know, I have friends that are like setting up their cold cards. They're watching my guides and that's great. Like they're going step by step with that. So I don't need to like be on the phone with them or anything. Um, and they're learning from it, which is great, but it's still, they're like, why do I have to do all this stuff? Will this get easier? Like, will I have to do less? I don't want to think about holding my private keys, blah, 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 blah. So I think it's, um, look, I, I'm, I'm all about the no, no KYC. I think it's important to hold your, your own keys. I think that's what this whole movement's about. But um, the, the caveat is that many people will not do that, will not want to deal with anything. Um, and so it's, you know, it's a, it's a case by case basis. But once they get exposure and they get a little taste of a price increase, it helps make everything, you lubes up everything else, all the learning. I have a question about the no KYC guide and about other people's techniques. Um, so there's one wallet that I recommend. You mentioned the cold card, but it's not actually the one that I recommend, but the one that I recommend is made by them. It's the open dime. Um, because what you end up with, with the open dime is physical Bitcoin. You don't need to think about the private key. And if you maintain possession of the device, that's it. You have your coins. Um, I'm curious, one, what the guide you guys published says about getting coins without KYC, because frankly, that's hard these days. Um, and two, uh, if anybody else is recommending open dimes to new users, uh, because that's yeah, I'm very, very consistent on that. I really trust that device. Who wants to jump in? I'd, um, I would just, I'd be hesitant to recommend an open dime um, for anyone new for a couple of reasons. One, if they lose the physical thing, they're screwed. Um, two, it requires a lot of responsibility. Three, if they lose the physical thing, they're fucked. So it's, um, it's a lot. And I've given open dimes as gifts, but the, the, the amount on them is negligible. And I assume the person's going to lose them because you know, they're not Bitcoiners, right? So they don't care. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't be comfortable doing that um, for anybody, but like close family, because I would walk them through it and I would be on top of them. Uh, I don't know. What are your guys' opinions? It's been my best successes actually, like for gifting it because you tell them, do not lose it. Put it where you keep, you know, cash to keep safe. This thing is cash. If you lose this thing, it's gone forever. People seem to have a harder time um, thinking about 24 or 12 words, you know, a seed phrase uh, as money than they do thinking about the little you know, condom wrapped open dime as money. Um, I'm, I don't think any of the ones I've given out have been lost. What if they break? Ah, uh, well, um, there have been, no, no, it, it's real. Uh, there have been reports of that on Bitcoin talk, but I've used them for a while now. I've never had that experience. Um, I think that if it happens at all, it happens very rarely. In fact, even the ones like, I'm, I'm not certain that all of the reports on Bitcoin talk of them breaking are actually accurate. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk on Bitcoin talk. Um, and then in terms of backups, well, I mean, backups are security risks too. You write down your 12 or 24 words and, and, and what happens when somebody sees your 12 or 24 words? Ah, you're fucked once again. So, I mean, I just tell people to treat it like cash. They do. Um, and that simple like mental model works out. So the only reason I'd push back on on the the open dime is uh, is the fact that Rodolfo himself says that they're not for hodling. Um, you kind of have to take a trip rot uh, into account as well. So um, 
you know, there is a maximum threshold that you can, you know, reliably hold your Bitcoin in that before you actually have to move it versus, you know, if it's in a, you know, a BIP, you know, uh, was a BIP 182, uh, a mnemonic passphrase, you know, 12 or 24 word passphrase, uh, you know, at least if that's backed up, you don't really have to worry about chip rot or anything like that. Um, but, you know, it's definitely the nuances personally, you know, I have them as like cool things, but I don't actually use uh, open dimes for, you know, anything hodling related. But like onboarding a noob, CK, I mean, I think that's kind of the point of this. I think it's easy to wrap your head around something physical. Everything with Bitcoin is completely like virtual almost. So Adam, what are you thinking, man? Well, I'm thinking what I've dealt with over time is, you know, hardware wallets are a little bit too complex for noobs. By the way, the dude who has the the podcast for his mom, that is a great idea. I mean, that's that's how you get newbies into this. Make it simple enough for your mother. And what's simple enough for your mother? An online bank, unfortunately. And whether we all like it or not, we all we love this complicated no KYC stuff. It's going to be super private. No one's going to be no we own it. But most people, what's going to end up happening, Coinbase is about to be go public. They're going to be incredibly wealthy. They are wealthy. That is going to be the Bitcoin bank. Most people are going to keep their Bitcoin at the Bitcoin bank. That's the easiest way to do it. You just, what I used to, what I did, you know, back in 2016, 2017 with friends and stuff, I, before there were a lot of options, I'd be like, just buy it at Coinbase. And then you're going to learn about these things called hardware wallets. And what did my friends do? They did nothing except one of them bought it at Coinbase. He bought a seventh of a Bitcoin. He still has that seventh. He paid hundred dollars for it. He still has that seventh of a Bitcoin at Coinbase. He he still has the option to get it off of Coinbase if he wants to. So he was onboarded. I mean, he's done great for himself. He, since then, he's had two children, and he's got what's he got now? Over seven thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin at at Coinbase that he paid hundred dollars for. So I I, I know we, we we have this strict orthodoxy. You know, I would recommend getting a hardware wallet to a newbie, like, like, but I would, I would explain it step by step, just get it at some regulated exchange. You can't keep it on there, dude, but they're going to learn over time. If they don't get it off, that it is a Bitcoin bank and they are used to banks. And that's uh, not everybody that gets into this uh, once, you know, the response, the personal responsibility of taking care of a, a something that's worth a lot in there. They don't trust themselves. They would rather trust a company that is a public company, will be a public company. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they'll treat it just like Bank of America. How they treat Bank of America with their money, they'll treat Coinbase. But uh, so, you know, in, in the perfect world, yes, a hardware wallet, that is what I would recommend. And, uh, but uh, most people, it's, it's too complex right now. They get freaked out by that 24 word seed. I mean, I've, I've told my mother about the 24 word seed and she's just like, oh my God, that's, I don't understand what the heck you're even talking about. dude. So props to the guy that's trying to teach it to his mom, uh, will create a, 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 you know, a podcast that makes it easy for moms. That, that is a good first step there. So hey, I want to say one can thing. Can you guys hear me? Justin, we can hear you. Let, let me say this real quick. I think that also for this uh, wallet series, it's about your first wallet. So maybe phrasing wasn't like, how do you how do you onboard a complete noob? It would be like, hey, you bought on an exchange. Um, here's a good guide for you to first custody Bitcoin for yourself. Um, so I just want to let everyone know that maybe he's out there listening. But it isn't just like, how do you walk up to a stranger and get them to like first interact with Bitcoin? Which I would say, Adam, you know, like, an online bank makes a lot more sense. You know, uh, I, my first experience was with Coinbase. I think Cash App is a great example. But when you first experience it, I think it's a neat series because it talks about, you know, privacy is a best practice. Like once you get your uh, like Samurai, for example, set up for yourself, how you could then take uh, approaches to acquire KYC free Bitcoin. So I think it's like putting like the cypherpunk best practices into something that possibly didn't exist before. But I don't know that I would just give it to a brand new noob. Like my non-tech friendly friends, I would be scared to like point them to this as a resource. But someone who's gotten the fever a little bit, they've experienced number go up. Now they're starting to read more and get the vibe. You know, this would be something that I put in front of them. Like, hey, if you want to be a real big corner, this is what the cool kids are doing. You need to check this out. Uh, yeah, I was just going to add. Oh. Yeah, go for it, Justin. I want to hear from so, you and Kaz. 
Yeah, so I think like, first of all, it doesn't really matter what form you kind of get people into, you know, like whether it's an open dime, whether it's a Coinbase wallet, whether it's Cash App. I think, I think in this sense, like the dollar cost average is so powerful because not only does it take the emotional, like trying to time the market aspect out of it, but as your wealth increases in Bitcoin terms, like your, your education and like that time it takes to really get a grasp of how Bitcoin works, like your, your knowledge of Bitcoin kind of grows organically with, you know, how much you're holding. Right. So if you hold a hundred dollars worth, you can have it in a hot wallet, play around with it. Once you get to a thousand dollars worth, you know, maybe you want to take possession of your keys when you get to ten thousand dollars worth. Like now, you know, you got to put it in cold storage and it kind of gives you the time uh, to do that when uh, when your dollar cost averaging. I, I like that a lot. So Justin, when you have your kind of first conversations with newbies, like how do you go from zero to like, this is how you dollar cost average? Cause that's something well, I do personally. Well, you gotta, you gotta have somebody who's willing to jump into the space, right? Like if you're, if you're trying to convince somebody who's not interested, you know, this conversation is kind of irrelevant, but if you have somebody who is now willing and able and interested in getting into Bitcoin, then you can start to have some of these conversations. All right. I think the distinction, I think a big distinction is someone getting into Bitcoin and someone who just wants Bitcoin. Because most of the people that I'm interacting with in my, you know, real life, like friends, family, they don't want to learn Bitcoin. They just want exposure. They want it to be safe and they want to forget about it until it's time for them to do something with it, right? There's no like, oh, I want to interact with Bitcoin or I really want to understand this. It's just like, oh, I want to, I want a, a position and that's it. Like, let me keep this super safe. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to worry about it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to learn about it. I just want to acquire wealth. That's the majority of people that I deal with. We, every single person on this is the, the fringe person. Not the, not the normal, regular person. So we have to remember who we're talking to, right? Like, I don't, get, I don't talk about KYC or privacy to most people because it's already too much, you know? And I'm like the extreme, look at me, I'm wearing a fucking mask. I'm a crazy person, right? But like, you got to know, I guess, know your audience. I mean, but so for, Adam, but after that cast, okay? I mean, if, we, if we're talking about easiest hardware wallet, or easiest physical wallet. Um, I mean, the the ball. I know the ballet wallet is is controversial, oh, God, but uh, come on. there no. It's what? it's easy. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> and, and I got the, okay, the, okay. the the advanced version. Uh, my my uh, a relative of mine has. So I mean, and he was able to figure it out and everything. So I mean, you, you, that this is we're, we're talking about a co couple different subjects here. But like easiest physical wallet. That's, I mean, that one's pretty darn easy. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here. I'm going to jump in here. Please, please do. So we're going to go all the way back to uh, the open dime because I'm stress testing an open dime right now as we're speaking. It's not going to break. I truly think it's, it might be one of the easiest ways to give people Bitcoin. Like, do I think it's the best way for anybody to store large amounts of Bitcoin for a long period of time? No, absolutely not. But do you have to worry and manage your private key? No, you don't. You literally just have to say, protect this. So I can't remember, like pretty much we went around the whole room. I can't remember who said it. Somebody just said that. Like, we just tell people, hey, just protect this. It's pretty easy. You don't have to give them a, you know, a fortune. And But that's a good introduction to Bitcoin. Um, going back to KYC, most people don't understand Bitcoin. So they're not going to understand why you should buy KYC Bitcoin. They don't understand the history of money and like 6102, they're not going to understand like KYC. So I think just introducing people just to the concept of like, you know, taking control of their life and their finances and buying Bitcoin, that's way more important than like doing everything perfect, like from day one. So uh, that's, that's where I'll go. 
Wow. I didn't expect to spend so much time on this subject, but um, I feel like it, it's for sure important. And it's something it's something like we all are interacting with a lot right now because there's a lot of outside interest about Bitcoin. Uh, this is when people who don't know anything are kind of jumping in. Um, you know, we there's can no, kind of stay no on this. There's no easy answer, bro. Yeah. That's the problem. I mean, I mean it's, everyone it's has a one way. Approach. It's one way. I mean, I, I recommend people like software wallets like Samurai and Blue Wallet like 99% of the time. But like there's some people like I would give an open dime to. Like it totally just depends on like the person and like, you know, how comfortable they are with technology and different things of what I would recommend them to. Yeah, it just depends on, you know, how they think about stuff. If they're yeah. the type of person who's more comfortable with a physical object, you, you give them the open dime. Um, yeah. and you, you help them fill it or whatever. Um, and if they're the type of person, you know, is going to need a backup, like you said, you can always use a software wallet. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of that physicalization aspect of the open den. Um, and when it comes to getting people like involved, I do want to say, I mean, I gave out my first open dimes, like, I don't know, three years ago, I guess. Um, they were trivial sums of money then, um, and uh, no losses. I checked in with everybody a couple weeks ago, so um, I'm very, very satisfied with that product. Cool. So last question on this subject, and then we'll move on, but how important is holding your own keys? Like, let's just call it in the first six months of buying Bitcoin. Does it matter at all? Let's go to Adam because Adam kind of had a counterexample. In, in the first six months? No, it, it's no, it's not. It, as long as you got the freaking, as long as you're not a no coiner screaming and complaining anymore, that's that's a great first step to get that, to stop being a person who's wondering and asking these questions and making up these excuses. As long as they have they've purchased Bitcoin, they're great for the first six months, but yet they really should start exploring getting it off that freaking exchange uh, at, at least after six months. But they, they're in a much better, think about, compare them to the no coiners. They're in such a much better position for the future of their lives than, than no coiners who keep on making up all these excuses. Why, oh, uh, is, is there going to be quantum computing? I'd rather have it on Coinbase than be worrying about quantum computing. Um, you, you, you raise a really, really good point. Although I do just want to say, I, I, I have serious concerns about that ballet wallet. Um, yeah, cause the keys are pre-generated, like give me an open dime any day, uh, because you generate your own key. Um, but you're, you're completely right, Adam. It's all about getting them off of zero, getting them into the experience and getting them thinking about what money is. People ask me about Bitcoin these days and I go, well, you ever thought about like, like what is money exactly? <laughs> and, um, you know, that really gets quite a thing going. All right, how important is to go off the exchange in, you know, let's just call it a reasonable amount of time, Justin. So the way I see Bitcoin is kind of like a race to the finish line and you know, all the time it takes to get there is your accumulation phase. And, you know, as long as you're increasing your odds of making it to the finish line with like the most amount of Bitcoin in your hands, like that should be the goal. So whether you keep it on an exchange or on a hardware wallet or in the Glacier protocol, whatever it may be, like you want to first of all, feel comfortable about where you're storing your coins and be able to do so. And, you know, evaluate the risks in custody and self-custody and to kind of maximize, you know, or minimize your loss as you're trying to accumulate. Yeah, I think that that's fair. It's it's like sometimes people are like, I need to protect this from a hacker or a robber. But the reality is, is they're making their funds very susceptible for a fuck up on the, you know, from themselves. And the reality is, is you just got to do whatever it takes to like, you know, 
increase your chance of holding on to as much coin as possible, right? It's just about, you know, minimizing how much you lose. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that could take a lot of different paths. You know, it, it's a very personal decision whether, whether to take possession of your own coins or to leave it with somebody else, whether, you know, BlockFi is a very controversial topic, whether you want to lend it for interest. You know, it's just a, it's a very personal, personal decision. It is. Um, I know way more people who have self-owned with the number one cell phone. And I mean, screwing yourself over when I say cell phone. Um, number one way to screw yourself over owning Bitcoin is to make some kind of complex arrangement to protect your key. So complex that you fuck yourself over. Um, and it, I mean, that, that's just awful to see. It's another reason I really like the open dime. It's more or less impossible to do that. Dude, Rodolfo's getting some great shills for the open dime today. All right. Um, how important is it to get off the exchange, Kaz, in a reasonable amount of time? Sorry. Um, <clears throat> as soon as reasonably possible, like if it's your first time interacting with an exchange, your first time learning and interacting with Bitcoin, it's probably going to take you, you know, a little bit, but like you need, you need to, like, if you're buying Bitcoin, like once you're investing, putting, you know, something into it, you should probably take the responsibility, you know, you know, in the first couple, you know, month to two months depending on how much money you're putting into it like when you should be like okay this is like now something considerable that i should you know look at putting in my control because that's really what bitcoin is and all the value is, is that you can control it yourself you can self-custody it it's a bearer asset and you know you should you should learn how to do that as soon as possible like when i introduce people to bitcoin if i'm there physically to do it you know, I try to do that as quick as possible. Like I try to get them to either send me Bitcoin or for me to send them Bitcoin for them to see that and, you know, interact with that as soon as possible. I feel like that's really important. Yeah. Uh, I forgot who said it, but gosh, it, it was, it was someone who was like, when you see the magic, like, especially when you're normally you're exposed to the traditional rails, when you see the magic of like final settlement, it was VJ boy potty. Like when you do yeah. it yourself and you see that power, like, and you know what it means. Um, yeah. it, it, it's really something special. So yeah, self custody does have kind of like that experience of like, wow, that was a powerful thing I just did. Let's go kiss. And then Joe, same topic. How important it is get off exchange quickly. So it's the most important thing. And, uh, I pound, like, I don't care who I'm talking to. I pound, I pound it in them because if you're buying this for number go up, number goes up because it's, Fixed supply, it's a bare asset, it's uncensorable. So you have to, like, if you're not going to use those benefits, then you're not, like, you're not doing yourself, you're doing yourself a disservice. It is the most important thing. So I have, you know, friends that are buying on Coinbase and they switch to, you know, better ways and they have their setup and they're starting to pull funds off. Regardless of the amount, the only time, the only time I don't push it is if I think that the person is just going to flip flop, they're buying maybe 20 bucks a week and they're going to sell it. They're going to sell it soon. They don't understand what Bitcoin is. They're just getting in on the hot, you know, hot money's going everywhere. They don't care. And if they don't care, I don't care. I don't push, you know, but for people who are like, this is valuable, you know, people that are putting in six, seven figures, five, six figures, most important thing you got to custody your own coins i think the best thing that can happen for bitcoin over the long term is that we get a 6102 type of deal where people can't custody people lose their shit some people it'll be a very bad situation short term but for the next 20 30 years people will remember that and they will respect self custody and we won't okay. be having these conversations anymore. Now, that's a very hard lesson. It's a hard pill to swallow. Okay. A lot of people are going to get screwed, but 
Go ahead. Yeah, I want to hop in here real quick because I know a lot of people are going to say something to what he just said. So uh, if we were to do a 6102 on Bitcoin, I don't is, think it will be successful. And I'm not saying it's right. scary, but okay, I'm we're, saying- we're talking. <laughs> okay, we're effectively talking about just Bitcoin that are on exchanges. Because if it's in self custody, how are you going to do a 6102? That's what he's Correct. talking about. Okay, yeah. so just, well, just, we okay, well, then, yeah. List. That, well, okay. Don't the, fucking the, tread on me. There's coin join. There's, you know, there's so many things you can it's do. It's complicated. To, <laughs> there's like, boat accident we're, events. Like, okay, I'm just saying, just, just, let's just compare I, hold on, hold on, the guys, physical he, aspect of, like, taking gold from people to the aspect of taking a digital piece of, like, you know, information from somebody. Like, how are we going to do that? How are the, how's anybody going to do that? That's it's, not it's the even point. Past stimulus That's checks. not the point. We He's can't even get enough. fucking stimulus but, checks in a people's bank accounts. That's account. not the fucking That's not even point, the point making. I'm making. Yeah, I'm not making that. That's okay, not okay. my point. The point is, it's a, it's a hit on the perception. People will be scared. It will scare people off. It, it, it's not fundamentally... A, a viable attack on Bitcoin, but it is on yeah. the infrastructure right. and the perception, the perception and the image that's the being built. Yeah. It's going to terrify a lot of people. It'll, I, it's extreme, but I think it will, you know, the, there won't be these conversations anymore. People will understand why Bitcoin's valuable and when they can acquire any, they will self custody it because they know, they, they remember what happened. It, I'm sure it'll get turned over. If it happened in America, which I don't think it can anymore. But if it did, it would last maybe a year, maybe less. Who knows? I mean, to be honest, no, I, I think- don't even. Hey, sorry, I don't even know if it's going to be a real. Like, we don't need a sixty-one hundred two for people to to get it. As soon as Bitcoin is real money to most people, and there's a real exchange hack, it's going to really fucking matter to most people. So um, I don't think it's going to take that much. Hack. That exchange hack was not. not it matters to everyone who cap. cared about Bitcoin back then, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying the the like the whole reason that we are preaching self custody right now on this podcast is because of Mount Cox. Like that's the lesson learned. Like no, that's I, it. I, I, All I right, okay. Mount Cox. Jo- Justin, then Joe. I have to stand up for the lineup. Justin, then Joe. Let's go. Thanks. I I think there's like a real risk of you know at least custody Bitcoin becoming uncustodiable, right? Like. Bitcoin can't be shut down, but if the governments tell all these exchanges, like, look, all these Bitcoins have to trade internally, that, that, that's what's going to happen. So as long as we can get Bitcoin into people's hands, Christian, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> this, this is a, this, this is a risk. Shut, shut down BISC. No, no, no. I'm just saying that the Bitcoins that exist within custodians could, like, never come out. Yes, absolutely. 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 I agree with that. I don't I don't know if I agree with the other things that you said, but that last statement I, I agree with. All right, let's go to Joe. I think that uh it's a journey and there's not an easy answer. And um unfortunately, some people got to get wrecked. I hope it does not happen. I hope there's no 6102. I hope people do not get wrecked. I think maximalist are uh you know, loud and proud about the way and uh, self custody is part of the way and not dabbling in shit coins is the way. And um, I think that we are going to continue beating our chest as maximalist. And uh, it's scary. Bitcoin's a bare instrument, you know, like it's on you. If you fuck up, it's gone. There ain't nobody to call except for, you know, nobody. So um, there's not an easy answer. And it's a journey and it's a process. And I think we talked about a lot of the ways, but I think the answer as quickly as possible, but uh, you got to want it because I think all of us have probably tried to help a friend or family member who uh, drugged their fucking feet and really didn't care and didn't have skin in the game. And uh, I, you know, me and my personal journey, I'm starting to not give a fuck about people a lot more uh, because I've tried and that, but, uh, but I'm going to continue you know, memeing at them. And I'm going to keep telling them to keep having as much fun as they want to have. And uh, if they, you know, my friends and family members come to me and like ask, I will definitely tell and give some solid advice. So that's what I got to say. I just, I think it's going to happen. 
there, there, there will be an attempt to seize Bitcoin. It's going to affect all of the major retail exchanges and a lot of people are going to lose their coins. Um, and it's only going to be a small portion of people who do not. That's yeah. All right. All CK, right. Pivot bro. Pivot. Yeah. Let's. So that was sad. I don't know about bearish, but sad. Uh, and I want to pivot to bullishness. Uh, Will Clement taking the Bitcoin space by storm with just bullish article after bullish article. Who is Will Clement? Fantastic article, huh? Who is Will Clement? Tell it to I everyone mean, who this this kid is. Dude, this kid's like eighteen years old from East Carolina University, and he's just like so incredibly smart, just insane. I mean, the Zoomers in this space just mind blowingly smart. But um, regardless, so I I haven't heard this name yet. So so show me this kid. Yeah, well, I I don't really even want to show him because you'll see him on the internet again. But uh, yeah, this article effectively what he does is he takes like markets like the S and P, markets like the fixed income market, markets like the real estate market, and then he tried to compress them into Bitcoin terms, right? So he he ran the numbers and he he's trying to push the envelope of you know how big can Bitcoin get. And he's actually going further than saying like, hey, take you know whatever market you think Bitcoin can capture divided by 21 million. He's saying, take that market and divide it by 2.4 million. That's the float. That's the amount of Bitcoin that's actively trading on exchanges right now. So he's deleting anything that's not actively <laughs> on exchanges. Um, so you get some so mind- are we gonna have numbers. a gamma, gamma squeeze on Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> like- I mean, you you get some mind-boggling numbers when you when you when you calculate this. Uh, my favorite number that he came up with is if you take all of the land on Earth divided by 21 million, you get 6,000 acres per Bitcoin. So that's my favorite number from the article. Um, we don't have to dwell on his numbers. I'll, I'll drop some more throughout this uh, this stream, but I'm just curious, how big can Bitcoin go? I mean. I, I want to go to Adam. Adam's Adam's seen Bitcoin at tiny numbers, and he's been predicting <laughs> massive numbers pretty much since day one. Like, well, well, how big can I, Bitcoin I, go, Adam? I don't do the clickbait quadrillion stuff at all. I I tell people take it one step at a time. So the fir the first goal was to get to a hundred billion dollar market cap, right? And we got to a hundred billion dollar mar market cap. The next was a trillion. We got to a trillion dollar market cap. Now, what's the next? We want, and we, we want people to be excited, but not to go too crazy. Well, Apple is worth $2.1 trillion. It's market cap, okay? And if you think logically, think calmly, we don't have to talk about all the land on earth, all the gold on earth, quadrillions of wealth on earth or whatever. Think very calmly and logically. Bitcoin is way more than a freaking company. Bitcoin has to be worth more than the most valuable company on earth. And right now, Bitcoin is only less than worth half of what the most valuable company on earth is. So um, it is very reasonable to say to anyone out there that if you believe in Bitcoin, you think it's going to be worth more than Apple. Thus, you think it's going to be in the six digit realm. It's going to be worth over $100,000. It's worth not even $60,000 right now. So we're talking, you know, if you get in, people are like, oh, it's too late. It's too late. Is it too late when it's only worth half of what Apple is worth? No, not at all. Not if you truly believe it, and this is not a fly by night thing, which is not, then it really should be worth more than every single freaking company. So there, that's your that's your next. And I know that that's bullish, but I don't like the clickbait stuff. I don't like the, you know, it's gonna be a million tomorrow. It's gonna be no, this is a very logical goal to have in mind. It's a, it's a medium term goal that's very attainable that we should all see if everything goes according to plan. And it's something to get newbies in that, that are that are just intimidated by the $57,000 number right there. So yes, uh, to, 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 get, to beat a $2.1 trillion market cap, what would Bitcoin have to be? $110,000 or something like that. Yeah. I know it doesn't, it doesn't sound that glamorous. 106. Huh? 106. All right, so it might not oh, seem that it, be higher with Apple is 106. I mean, something so, like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it, it hit a hundred, it hit a trillion at 53. Um, here, here's another bullish number. Um, currently, so Apple, what? That's two trillion. Uh, the entire S&P 500 is 31 trillion. Uh, so 
that if you compress that down into uh, Bitcoin terms, that is 554 million Bitcoins. So um, there's a, a there's a long way for Bitcoin to go to smash all of that into uh, 21 million Bitcoins. It is Never bold. go up. Let alone 2 million Bitcoins. <laughs> Jacob. Oh, I was just saying that that was, that was an extremely bullish thing. And I also want to say that, that I think Adam is totally right that the next target is like your Apple, your Saudi Aramco. Um, and, and, and then it just becomes this question of like, um, like guys, you know, Bit, Bitcoin, we're nothing right now. Next target's that's gold. very interesting. At, at 60 gold. Day, um, we're very, very small. Um, if we're measuring against USD or we're measuring against um, Chinese Yuan or we're measuring against uh, even like, you know, the real estate markets, things like that. Um, things, gosh, Bitcoin begins to have kind of, I mean, I, I really genuinely try not to measure it in dollars at this point. And people, especially noobs, we were talking about onboarding noobs, they don't really get that. Um, but I feel like with Bitcoin, because I, I can transmit it anywhere on the planet to anybody of my choice, um, I don't have to ask permission, I just do it. It's a very, very different thing than, than holding dollars. And I think that compared to any other asset, it's going to hold its value better. Bullish, bullish. Okay, how high can we go? I feel like Kaz wants to talk. Kaz, I mean, there's some insane numbers here. I want to draw the attention to asset-.com. If you want to see Bitcoin compared to other equities, other stocks, they even have a Bitcoin flipping page. Uh, highly recommend asset-.com. Great, great website. It's like coin market cap minus the shit coins. It's Unless you consider, you know, equities to be shit coins, but then there's a lot of, you they know, are. shit coin equities there. I want to but yeah, it's just comparing awesome. bitcoins to equities, uh, and it's pretty awesome. A pretty awesome website. Yeah, I love the website. Had to crack a beer for this one. Um, so, how high can Bitcoin go? Is the question. Um, I think there are multiple answers to that question. If I'm gonna price it in today's terms. I would say over the next decade, uh, Bitcoin, so there's about $400 trillion worth of global wealth um, between everything, between all store value markets, between derivatives, between you know broad money supply, between pretty much every asset in the entire world is around 400, you know, it's, it's increasing, but you know, just over $400 trillion of wealth. I think Bitcoin is now a trillion dollars in market cap that it could go to, you know, easily a quarter of that to 50% of that over the next decade. So I think that's a, a way to realize the upside of it, but also it's very, very, very hard to realize the upside of it when you're also trying to simultaneously take into account the downside of fiat currencies of pretty much every asset in the entire world from, from pretty much all bonds, sovereign wealth funds, corporate bonds, um, you know, central bank reserves to, you know, pretty much everything from fine wines to collectibles to in a fucking tease and digital art. Bitcoin's going to eat all of that over the next decade. So like, I don't even know how to grasp what the number is going to actually look like in dollar terms, if the dollar is even, you know, still competing at that point. I like your point. It's hard to calculate and because rent. everything else is <laughs> everything else is hard to measure, right? Isn't that like the one of the biggest problems here is that um, is the fact that there's no proper like way to calculate economic, you know, make economic calculations with fiat money. Like it's so manipulated that we're seeing distortions in supply chains, we're seeing distortions in asset allocation. So hopefully Bitcoin fixes this and as Bitcoin goes to the heights that we think it will uh it helps with with that kind of asset allocation and the clarity of like what is something actually worth um but until then it's going to be a wild journey in dollar terms in clown bucks 
in all of these things uh, that we are kind of dealing with today. Justin, how high can Bitcoin go? Well, my thesis is that Bitcoin's worth everything or Bitcoin's worth nothing. And now that Bitcoin's reached a trillion dollar market cap, I don't think it's going to be worth nothing. Pretty simple, pretty clean. Go on, go Everything or nothing. Mute. I've I've End said that right before. There. That's perfect. That's hey, awesome. Wait, I, I got something to add, uh, Christian. Christian, you, you mentioned you mentioned asset-dash.com, okay, which is a great site. Um, but you said there are no S coins there. And you are incorrect, actually. Uh, Ripple is on there. You can look up plenty of altcoins on there. Ethereum, if it was a company, would be the 45th most valuable company on the planet Earth right now. So they, they rank quite a few. Uh, now, I don't know if people consider that an S coin, but Ripple is definitely an S coin. OK, so that <laughs> that that is that is listed on there as well. It, it's an entertaining site, asset-dash.com. They, they've merged, okay? Uh, what you call these, these, these S coins, these, these stinkers, um, and equities are essentially the same thing at this point. I, I actually, okay, listen, Ripple, all right, Ripple is down here. It is a genuine S coin, okay? There is no purpose for Ripple. It will never help anybody with anything. Um, it was designed to extract value from people. There are crypto assets out there that actually do stuff. They're interesting. Uh, uh, no one cares. Sorry, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin Magazine. No, They're shit coins. What Bitcoin hey. No, I, I agree. You know, it's Bitcoin or shitcoin. It's all if you from an investment advice perspective, it's all trending to zero in terms of Bitcoin. And part of what Bitcoin enabled is permissionlessness and the fact that people can do stupid fucking shit with their bitcoins is proof of that. So there you go. Um, how high can Bitcoin go? Bro, let me tell you how high it can go. Let me tell you how high. Uh, All right, I'm going at least to Mars because I listened to uh, uh, VJ. No, I'm sorry, Drew. Drew with uh, Peter McCormick, and uh, we're at least uh, the moon is within the hash center of uh, Bitcoin's mining. Okay. It would be difficult to get mining on Mars, uh, just not feasibly possible. So we're at least going to the moon. Um, it can happen on Mars. It can happen within our source. Martians, the Martians will chains. have to have a new form of Bitcoin. But they won't have to. They can still transact within Lightning Network or with their own side chains or something else that develops. It's going to be but through a side chain. It's going to be... Hold on. Be they will not be able to mine Bitcoin, yes. which yes. will cause some contentiousness between earth and mars i can exactly. foresee some kind of like um you know earth see, and this is see Martians this is going to be the new forex off. market the new forex market is going to be the competing the settling between the blockchain that have to settle between astronomical amounts that cannot be like you know like handled through mining you know like so Mar that, the martians are going to have to have a new form of bitcoin they have to, like, or they otherwise they're going to, well, and let, otherwise, otherwise they have to piggyback off ours, which they won't they want to be able to mine. Because, well, All right, guys, just like the shit coin talk, I'm going to cut this one off because like, <laughs> fuck who, like you, you asked the like, fucking if Bitcoin, question. If Bitcoin is speculation. This shit is, that is the utmost speculation. Okay. So, okay, yes. okay. Okay. Bitcoin Don't, is going no, no, to the no, no, no. fucking okay, okay. moon. No, 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 I agree okay, both okay. physically this and This is Bitcoin, and Bitcoin astronomy. Bitcoin astronomy. Go read Bitcoin astronomy. It's a great, yeah, go read I, it's great. Yeah, Bitcoin, I, Bitcoin astronomy. I, I've showed it to Elon multiple times. No, you haven't fucking read anything. You haven't read anything. What the hell is I'm not kidding. It's actually an article. Like, Go read something, CK. Hey, Kiss, how high can Bitcoin go? And keep it on Earth, please. But hopefully just really fucking big numbers. Yeah, 100x by 2030. Easy. Your purchasing power goes up 100x. That's it. Book my time for the next topic. I might pop off soon. This is simple. <laughs> 100x. That's it. Easy. Easy 100x. But, but the next decade is going to be fucking crazy. So it's going to be rough and tumble, but yeah, we'll be there. 
I mean, you you don't you don't stick uh you know what is it five hundred and fifty million bitcoins into two million bitcoins without some craziness. Correct. And yeah, that's the that's the size of the equity markets today measured in bitcoins today. Um, guys, I mean, I'm pretty bullish on Bitcoin. Like, do you guys think it's going to take a long time or do you think it's going to be a turnaround? Like Kiss is saying it's, you know, in terms of Bitcoin and, you know, it could get to really high numbers maybe without necessarily, you know, becoming the money that we all measure value in. Right. I don't, I don't know. Maybe yes. No. Uh, personally, I see like by the next election, by 2025, like Bitcoin will have already changed borders. Like it will have already changed what countries look like. That's how do, like, do you think we'll have quickly I think it's gonna happen. Po- do you think we'll have politicians that have a Bitcoin stance in the next I mean, yeah, we got like four of them coming to Bitcoin twenty twenty one. So yeah, I do no, no, no. I do think that we will. I think most politicians by the next election in you know in the next three or four years will have a they have to be one side or the other. I think that's how contentious it'll be that's what i meant ck not do we have a senator who likes bitcoin who is our queen by the way my question is will it be a will we see a line in the sand with mainstream politicians not mainstream with u.s federal elected politicians that that's the big question i think so because they're they're gonna try to nuke it um and everything adjacent to it, and everything that allows you to hold and generate wealth privately as yourself. So what, all, what's you adjacent know, to Bitcoin? What, there's nothing else. What, what else is there? Oh my God, there's all the you know thousand or so projects that sprung up only because Bitcoin exists. Bitcoin made wow. them all possible. Um, and you know they're going to gun for all of that. I'm very sure of that. Well, I, I hope that they waste a lot of energy on the shit coins, uh, because I personally consider the shit coins to be a, just a DDoS on their on their finite energy, which uh, I, I'm a big fan of. Adam. Hey, well, you can consider the altcoins in DeFi to be a shield for Bitcoin. They they are centralized, and it's easy for bureaucrats to go after these centralized uh, creations. And, and virtue signal to all their followers, look, we're taking care of these horrible terrorist DeFi people and uh, we're taking on cryptocurrency and it's, it's just a shield for Bitcoin. They'll ignore, they, they'll know not to go after Bitcoin. I'm not too worried about these dudes going after Bitcoin. They've got so many mindless things to waste voters' times on. I don't think every politician by 2024 will have a stand on Bitcoin. I, I don't think. I do think by that time, there will be a lot of, um, from the current administration, a lot of interference on a lot of things that deal with cryptocurrency and on the exchanges. But I, I think I think Bitcoin will come out uh, just fine. I think some of this DeFi stuff is going to take a huge hit, uh, just like the ICOs uh, took uh, some regulatory hits uh, last time time around. So look at it as a positive way. The the S coins and the DeFi projects and the 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 art tokens or whatever they're just a shield for Bitcoin. Uh, for the government to get distracted with that stuff instead of you know going for the real thing, which they really can't go for anyway. Shield, it's a DDoS. I agree. Um, next, who, who who wants to chime in? I do. I think that there's no doubt that we're going to see uh, on the next big election cycle and for what less than for 2024, we're going to see it on the grandstand. I think that um, I respect what everyone said, but I, I will say that things happen a lot faster. I mean, the world changes very, very rapidly, you know, um, and I think that this bull is going to be fucking crazy and uh, we're going to be in a different world in three years. And I think that it will absolutely be front and center. And I think there'll be a line in the sand. I think we will know as Bitcoiners who's with us and who's against us. I think we'll know who's for the state and who's for the individual. And uh, I think we'll be very clear. And um, I think that we'll know where we want to live uh, within these United States. I, I could not agree more with what Joe said. Uh, that's perfect. 
honestly. You want to talk about politics more? Should we move on? I don't know. Do we want to All talk right. about politics more? We probably shouldn't. No. No, yeah. let's move. Yeah, let's move yeah, on when you put politics. it that way. So, um, earlier this week, NY Dig brought on the uh, one of the leadership members, one of the senior members of, uh, was it the uh, which uh, which which insurance New York company Life. was it? New York Life. Yeah, New York Life. He came on board, uh, kind of following up NY Digs, I guess, existing relationship with Mass Mutual. Um, for those who don't know, NY Dig, NY Dig is the hottest institutional Bitcoin maximalist, Bitcoin forward custodian onboarding presence out there. Um, and the fact that, you know, leadership from NY Life, um, it, insurance companies like Mass Mutual, um, actually buying and holding Bitcoin. Um, you know, these are pretty big moves. Um, our boy Dylan at Bitcoin Magazine broke down kind of why, uh, why it makes sense, why insurance companies have really long-term liabilities and in a world with 0% interest rates and uh, kind of crazy valuations across equities that something like Bitcoin makes sense. Um, but it is really interesting to see large institutions like New York Life, like Mass Mutual, like insurance companies in general, which have a lot of cash on the sidelines, um, you know, looking at this baby asset, right? It's just crossed at the, uh, a trillion. It just got, you know, close to fang territory. So, um, I mean, Kiss, you you were pretty short on the last one. I'm hoping that you you have a few more things to say about this topic. <laughs> you know, insurance companies, institutionalization, um, you know, what are your opinions here? Um, well, <clears throat> I guess I can, I mean, I guess it's good long-term, but the Morgan Stanley, that, that Morgan Stanley news that, that just came out a couple of days ago, right? The first yeah. U.S. bank to offer its, its institutional investors access to Bitcoin and people are making it out like it's some big deal. But if you look at the stipulations, it's so onerous and so small. It's almost like, it's like a PR stunt. I mean, I just, it just, it looks like to me that they're just more terrified than anything else because they're like, yeah, yeah, we, we want, we like Bitcoin, but only a little bit. No, no, don't get too, don't get too crazy. You have to, you have to have a lot of money first. You got to hold it here only a little bit. So what is that? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's, this is just a hot thing. Hot money everywhere, $69 million NFT. You know what I mean? Maybe for a lot of these people, Bitcoin is the same thing. Now for an insurance, a hundred year old insurance company, I mean, they're obviously very, very smart people. So they probably get it. But I think a lot of it is um, probably just press and hype. And, you know, we get a nice 50, 60% drawdown I think a lot of them are going to be going probably just dumping their positions. Maybe not the insurance companies, but just a lot of this PR, PR porn. That's it. Well, Hey, it, it is bullish. I think great points kiss. Um, at the same time, it is bullish that, you know, in 2017, Bitcoin was a bad word and everyone wanted just enterprise blockchain. And now Bitcoin's the hype word. So I think that's, that's bullish. That's for sure. Um, Adam, What's your, what, what's your take on uh, insurance big witch? <laughs> Jump it into Bitcoin. You front run the I, shit out of them. <laughs> I, I think in insurance companies getting into it, it's just, it's just another step toward another uh, corporate entity being cool with it. And I think, I think it's a positive. It's, it's to be expected. Eventually, all types of corporate entities will dabble into it. They want to make money. They want to be rich. I mean, there, there are a lot of people that talk about how Bitcoin will destroy the banks Oh, I think it will enhance the banks. They'll they'll all become Bitcoin banks or cryptocurrency banks. So uh, it's all expected. It, it, the the real big institutional news still to this very day was when Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy made the announcement in whenever it was August or September that they had bought it for their treasury. That that ended the period of time when we were still in the early part of Bitcoin or the super early or still pretty early. But things changed that day. 
And I mean, and you've seen the price react. It was around $10,000 then. Well, what's happened since then? So that, that was the big one right there. So that, that, that started a chain reaction. So all, all sorts of institutions are going to get into it now. It's only a matter of time. I'm just sitting back and relaxing and enjoying the institutions getting in. And I remind all the people out there, if you're an individual, a retail investor, whatever you want to call yourself, don't be angry in 2024 and cursing Wells Fargo for being so rich because they bought Bitcoin. You could have got in before them. So right now, it's, right now, insurance companies are buying it. There's there's certain types of companies that aren't buying it yet. You could still beat these multi-billion dollar companies into buying Bitcoin, okay? Or you could be a bitter no corner in 2024 complaining about how every single type of institution on this planet beat you to it. Because it's just it's a matter of time before everyone gets every institution gets into it. So think of it that way. That's that's my positive take. I think, I think it's big news. I mean, it's pretty much an admission from these big institutions that there's no better place to put their money. So, I mean, insurance companies are very like thorough. They're very well thought out. They, they know the bond market is dead. They probably see equities as overpriced and they're looking at Bitcoin as, you know, not necessarily a safety valve, but somewhere to put a substantial amount of money that has a, has potential of growing. Growth of value. And yeah, I mean, here, here's something, and, and I, I don't mean to change the subject, but newbies, when they look at Bitcoin, they think 60000 That's so expensive compared to 20000 compared to 10000 which I could have bought it at. Like Bitcoin is expensive. But what I think these institutions get, what we get is that Bitcoin, its TAM is massive, right? Its TAM is in the trillions. And we've just scratched $1 trillion. We've just scratched one. So um, I think these institutions at least get that. They at least get that. Jacob. Did you say trillions? I mean, I, look, look, uh, look, I'm really quite sure that unless I, there are a couple of like key risks that I see, but no, we, we go past trillions. It's into the quadrillions. The reason it is, is because we keep printing dollars. We keep debasing all the fiat currencies Nobody's going to launch a plain old gold-backed currency. We're going to keep screwing those over. And um, that's why I, do, I try not to price my Bitcoin in dollars. I just, I just sit on it. That's it. All I, all I know is that insurance companies are one of the most risk-averse institutions on the face of the fucking earth. And the fact that, like, you've got Ex CEOs coming on board with NY Dig is an like an incredibly bullish signal. Um, I mean, this is how like the government works. You know, you work at the state and then you go consult elsewhere and you bring your fucking shit policy on board to the state. Uh, this is going to bring Bitcoin to other. This signals that the Overton window says it's okay for um, insurance companies to accumulate Bitcoin on their balance sheet. So uh, like the author said, like Dylan said, I'm incredibly bullish on this. And uh, I think it's fucking awesome. I, I don't know if anyone else would yeah, care to I'd disagree. Love, I'd love to hop in here. I'm not going to disagree at all, but I'm, I'm going to add to the point. It's because like Bitcoin's risk profile has adjusted uh, since it has grown to this new level. Like, so actually by just default number go up, uh, Bitcoin reaching a trillion dollars in market cap it is now accessible to a whole new level of an, of an investor class that can bring, that can bring in so much more money than just the normal retail investor that has been propping this up for 12 years. So like, if you have not bought Bitcoin up until now, you know, you, you've had 12 years to front run institutions. So now, yeah, yes, like this week, Morgan Stanley comes out. They're going to offer Bitcoin only to people that own, I think it's 2 million within, uh, you know, within their company. Like that sucks, but like there are so many other ways for you to buy Bitcoin and you need to just do it. Like that's it. It's a bargain still. 
at 60K is really cheap to where this is going when you compare it to, look, take Bitcoin, compare it to- It's cheap no matter what the price is. It's always cheap compared to fiat currency. Yes. You, you, you have one, you have, you, you have a fork in the road. Do you want to have blood money that's based on terrorism that funds pretty much everything and you're going to lose everything you store 20% a year on top of what you pay in taxes? Yes. Or you just want to have yes. a sound form of money that you control? And that's Dude, it. Fuck the state. Okay? Like, what they the hate fuck? You, like, okay? It's, like, what? it's, it's <laughs> communism or it's individualism. Your choice. It's that simple. Like, uh, there's no way, yeah. you know, for just to keep going down this fiat money path. It's going to lead to more centralization and less individual liberty. So fuck that. They already want to raise call. fucking taxes after they just printed so much money. Are you fucking kidding me? They need like, to get how, it back. How is, how is nobody having a problem with this? No, no, like, no, no. They're, they're just getting our stimmy. Okay. finally okay. It, but it, we, we look, won't we won't go down this path today no one pay taxes this is financial advice just kidding just kidding um they did kick back the, they did kick back the tax deadline uh by a month in the u.s so um hodl on comrades one more month to hold <laughs> before you pay them taxes if it means anything, the last two years have been the first few years in my memory that they've ever pushed back the the tax deadlines. And uh, there is a stat line in the Weimar Republic. By the time it all fell apart, the government only ran 4% on taxes. So the less taxes mean for the government, the closer we are to the end. I just, all I'm saying is I strongly, strongly recommend that everybody pay their taxes in full. It's very, very important. I I agree. I was um, just kind of buzzing talking. Well, you know, I mean, uh, it, but it, fuck it, the state. Fuck, fuck the state. Fuck, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck the state. Exactly. Uh, fuck, fuck all. Fuck that. central bankers. Let it be known on this chat that I said fuck central bankers and fuck the IRS. But pay your taxes. Because they'll kill you if you don't. They will kill they you. They have guns, but so yeah. Anyways, comply with all so, the rules. Very important to comply. A story that I find very very interesting is uh, the story of Bitmex. Oh, Bitmex.com is still in operation. Um, the CFTC launched an attack of an attack on them last fall. And uh, the way that they reacted was unlike how any other, let's call it financial institution under attack from the U.S. has, has uh, acted. They never stopped withdrawals. And that's because all of their money on the system, all their value was BTC. And it was controlled by Bitcoin multisig. So um, there, there was initially when, when the... <clears throat> when the legal actions began, um, I think Sam Reed is the CTO living in Boston. He was taken into custody. The rest of the executives at BitMEX were <coughs> out of custody and out of the US. But, um, but of course, the exchange continued operating, which is the key here is that unlike every other kind of exchange that's used USD rails, they couldn't just like, bam, your account is frozen, right? Um, so now we are seeing um, <clears throat> the BitMEX, uh, BitMEX co-founders kind of now going into custody, now, you know, flying to the US and, uh, you, know, um, you know, allowing themselves to uh, kind of enter into agreements with the US. Um, but what I find is really interesting about this story is that because of Bitcoin, their business was never interrupted. Because of Bitcoin, they were able to kind of surrender on their own terms um, versus uh, without Bitcoin, like Arthur Hayes, all of these people would be on their knees, right? They'd be on the run and it'd be a completely different situation where um, Bitcoin, BitMEX is right now. And I just see this trend of like, 
in the future, companies are going to have more bargaining power with the state. And it's going to, you know, we are already seeing Facebook having bargaining power with Australia, but we're going to start seeing more and more companies like BitMEX having bargaining power with the U.S. and with other state entities. So um, while like kind of on the surface, it seems like, oh, yeah, BitMEX is surrendering. These executives are surrendering. Arthur Hayes is going to be in Hawaii next month and surrendering. Um, you know, I see like a path for, yeah, the state has way less power in this specific uh, case study of BitMEX than it has had historically in the last hundred years or so. Sorry, that was long-winded, but curious what you guys think. Shout out Arthur Hayes and BitMEX. What up, Justin? <coughs> Just said sh shout out Arthur Hayes and BitMEX. I think they've handled the situation so well. And, you know, I think using Bitcoin as, as their money, uh, their bank accounts couldn't get shut down. Their customers were protected and they didn't cave. You know, they, they stuck by their guns. They allowed everybody to withdraw. Uh, you know, moving forward, it may be a different story for a little while, but I, I think they've done a tremendous job. Well, it was a tremendous invention. Dude, that yeah. swap is freaking brilliant um and i uh, i'll never be able to see arthur hayes as a criminal uh because of what my friends built for their families with his tools screw that that guy really helped people that i know but yeah, yes well, okay, i mean to your, to your to I'm your gonna point, hop like, in there and say the same thing about uh, Ross Albright, but that dude, uh, it's fucked. So, Justin, yes, sir. What were you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say, like, to your point on like companies having leverage. I think it applies to everybody who holds Bitcoin, whether you're an individual or a company. Like if you're not relying on the government's infrastructure, then you're allowed to do uh, things outside of that infrastructure, whether it's going somewhere else and starting a company or, you know, somewhere to live. Like, you know, Bitcoin gives people the ultimate freedom and you know, it gives you more choices, it gives you more options, and that's that's one of the value props. Adam. I just, the bigger story for me and the continuing story is how the United States government and the state of New York <laughs> think they have jurisdiction over the entire financial world. And I, that's not why we created this country. I... I, I <laughs> It, it's it's sad that uh, it, it, that the United States and the state of New York feel they're in charge of this financial empire, and they just can't let entrepreneurs on the other side of the freaking world do their thing. Now, with that in mind, if you are dealing with an entrepreneur on the other side of the world and using them as a third party for your Bitcoin, let just this be a lesson that just because they're on the other side of the world doesn't mean that one day the New York or the United States isn't going to come after them and possibly ruin you financially too. Now you're, you're saying that this time around, you know, people didn't lose their funds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't, you don't know what third party that's outside of the United States that the state of New York or um, the United States is going to go after next time. So it, it's another reason to, you know, not invest in projects per se, but invest in yourself and control your own private key. But still, I, I just find it, why, why is the United States doing this still? Why? Why is the state? Well, I know why the state of New York is doing it, because the attorney general wants to run for governor and wants to become popular and wants to make a name for herself. That, that's understandable. OK. But the, 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 the United States, ha, I wish it would give up its, uh, the, the mentality that it is the ruler, that it rules a financial empire. The, the, the world would be a better, the United States would be a better place if the, the, it, we did not export our, our bureaucracy 
to invade private businesses on the other side of the world. Well, an empire is a waste of money. Uh, we enforce it with with weapons, with the military, and um, yeah, it's it's harming the country, and uh, not to mention souls. We could get into souls, but yeah, I'll let somebody else get into souls. Talk about the morality, people. Souls? Why are we talking about souls? I just put my laser eyes on. Excellent. You need your laser eyes so that you can blend. <laughs> uh, military-backed money. We're talking about souls, keep it simple, Bitcoin, because um, fiat's immoral, and it's only kept afloat by immoral means. I mean, Bitcoiners yeah. love pounding on that drum. It's true. I think Arthur um, Hayes is, um, I, I'm a big fan of his blog, his writing, and I think, uh, you know, we just need more people that whether it's just him or him and, you know, his, his other co-founders, I never heard their names before this all went down, but, you know, we need smart people that are willing to like stand for something and not just get on their knees and conform like so many other businesses do. Um, and uh, I like seeing it. And you know what? The wealthier that people like that are, the better that we all are. Because, the, you know, if, if you don't have any means, it doesn't fucking matter how idealistic you are. You don't, you don't have any power. But when you have, I mean, that dude, you know, that dude's got a lot of money. That insurance fund has done very, very well. Liquidations are a good business to be in. And... Um, you know, I, I, <clears throat> I'm sure he's going to get out of this and then he's going to do something else dope and he's going to keep on, or they, I'm sorry, I keep referring to him. Hopefully the other two guys are not cucks also. Um, you know, they do some other dope shit and they just kind of keep, you know, being on the front lines running um, because we need that. We need, more, we need more entrepreneurs like that that stand for something that are willing to die um, for the cause. You know, because that's that's what it takes to change shit. I feel like Bitcoin is is grooming that in mass. Am I wrong? Like interact, I mean, like all these young Coinbase, people that are Coinbase interacting custody. with the pro with. Let's talk about how much Coinbase uh, institutional uh, custody. It's bigger than their uh, their retail, right? How, how much does Coinbase custody for? Um, for uh, institutions, some crazy amount of Bitcoin, right? You tell me. I don't. I don't know what it is. I wanted to ask a question about that earlier, but I think that number is um, inversely related, inversely uh, proportional to the to the sentiment that you just made. I hope it's not, but I feel like it is. No, I mean, I'm just saying that, like the young people that are interacting with Bitcoin. Like they're being groomed to to resist. They're being groomed to see it, to 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 understand reality, and to you know build despite the permission, right? So uh, I'm bullish. Yeah, me too. Although young, all the boomers with the money can keep you know making stupid ass decisions with their money. They they can do that because the government absolutely will not allow their retirement funds to crash. Look. We're propping up the stock market writ large. Um, that's why I said there's a continuum between equities and so-called S coins, um, because uh, look, we're, we're printing dollars and we're placing them directly adjacent to the stock market. Um, and that's why stocks have high values. Yeah, we're, eff we're effectively eliminating risk, you know? Risk is not allowed to exist. And the only way to do that, because we're at the zero bound, is to print more dollars. So as long as that keeps happening, values are going to go up and Bitcoin more than most until the charade's over. We, I, I want to mention one thing. Uh, we, you guys, a, a few of you were talking about, you know, taking a stand, you know, risking it all, you know, sacrificing everything for, for the Bitcoin calls and you know, people could do what they want to do. One of, 
One of the things that's easy to do, um, I think, is a little thing that you could do if you're truly in the Bitcoin overlay. If you truly, you know, control your financial fate, control your your Bitcoin, uh, your private key and everything, you can't be canceled any longer. So the simple thing you, is just keep speaking your mind out there on social media. You know, fitting in is overrated. Keep on being a unique beast. And it sets an example because there are a lot of people that are down and out now. And they're like, I can't say what I want to say anymore. I am so scared of, of speaking the truth. I have to conform for my children. But if they see someone who's not, they're going to wonder, like, why is that dude speaking the truth? And the bottom line is they can't take my freaking wealth. They can't fire me. They can't because I, I work for me. I own. They can't close that. They can close my bank account. Who cares if they freaking close my bank account? I got a Bitcoin. So I, I got more than one Bitcoin. So uh, it, it's, this is, that's the little things you can do right there. I mean, I would not advise someone, uh, you know, if, if you want to start a big, giant, multi-billion dollar Bitcoin business that goes against what uh, the, the, the New York and what the federal government says, you're, you're taking a huge risk there. You're, you're, that's a central point of uh, weakness right there. That, that's an attack vector. That's no longer just Bitcoin. But if you just keep it simple, <laughs> keep it simple, it, Bitcoin. It sounds like you're talking about Tether. If you keep it simple, Bitcoin, if you just own Bitcoin, you are, you've got all the freedom in the world and you can demonstrate it. And that's a slap in the face without sacrificing yourself and, uh, and without putting yourself at, at, at a risk for financial ruin or, or jailing. To, to, to viewers, I, I, I would like to say I'm, I'm a total zealot. Right. And I really, really believe in this stuff. And so I speak out about it. But like people, you can buy a Bitcoin or a tenth of a Bitcoin and you never have to tell a soul. Um, you can pay slightly above market rates and you can get without anybody knowing it. Um, you can buy a so-called S coin, turn it into Bitcoin and ensure that nobody has any clue that you have it and just sit on it. And that's fine. It's perfectly acceptable. You do not have to be a zealot. You could read our guide on how to acquire and hold your Bitcoin KYC free and custody or and uh, with self custody uh, with wallets that you can download for free. So uh, go check that out on Bitcoin Magazine. Um, our man Econo Alchemist doing some good work out there. Um, <clears throat> so I mean, I personally think that okay. Like, yeah, one person with Bitcoin can get attacked. The government can attack Bitcoiners, right? But uh, the Bitcoin revolution is kind of about uh, the government not being able to scale to enforce everyone having Bitcoin, to enforce and stop people from, um, from leveraging Bitcoin as a tool because Bitcoin itself is permissionless. And that's kind of like how it kind of gets, you know, it's overwhelming decentralization, overwhelming people are holding their keys and overwhelming people are validating the blockchain. And that is just unstoppable. Like that's kind of how I see all of this shaking out. Like, do you guys like, is, is that decentralization, people holding their keys, people validating the chain, even if it is a small percentage, even if there's a lot of coins inside of Coinbase, is that like, going to happen no matter what is, is is that need continued education like what does it take for that like kind of like bitcoin unstoppable dream to actually play out kaz i knew you're gonna go to me first <clears throat> you can go we can go to jacob he wants to talk yeah go to jacob. i have a question it's not a comment it's a question people how many Bitcoin do you think exist? 21 million. 21 million. Oh, I don't think so. I think it's a hell of a lot less. I have personal evidence to. I mean, if, if we're going to get really cosmic here, no Bitcoin exists. So. Um... Oh, no, 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 they exist. But how many are left? Guys, the attrition rate is how many in how many ever existed? Do they ever exist at all? I uh, think definitely. I mean, I, I I'm one of the nerds who who builds this crap. So I yeah, I mean, they do exist. It can be 
found and they definitely exist. But the thing is that I think that a lot of those parked coins, uh, they have been lost. They're easy to lose, easy as hell. I figure there's 13 million Bitcoin in the wild and the rest have been lost. Um, so, you know, if, if you're watching this, you may want to factor that into your calculations. Well, no. if you read Will's article, you can't even take that into account. You can just only take the 2 million that are actively being traded into your calculations. So, you know, these numbers are going to get huge. That's right. I mean, once once Bitcoin hits the right person, it never moves again. CK, can I answer your question? Because you got me fired up with it. Hit me. So as long as mining doesn't get corrupted, any attack on Bitcoin puts a premium on private keys. So whether it's financialization, whether it's KYC nonsense and like a splitting between white market and black, black market Bitcoin, like as long as mining does not get corrupted, if you try and come after Bitcoin, it's just going to put a premium on holding private keys. Uh, can you define the corruption of mining, please? The corruption of mining. <laughs> So like if, if, if transactions get sent, censored at the pools, like if governments can out, you know, outdo hash power, like ha however, like transactions get settled, if that gets messed with, I would consider corruption of mining. Yeah, I'll add like, let's just say it's not a market mechanism that uh, appends uh, new transactions to the chain. Okay, so yeah, all right, that's fair. So when that there's process, literally like no incentive at all <laughs> to do this. It's oh, more well, they have an incentive. They want to run the presses. The printing presses. That's the incentive. Yeah, so you know, people, the incumbents have a, a huge incentive, but um, it, let's just say independent market actors wouldn't have an incentive to do that. So, yeah, hence why mining being corrupted is when mining no longer is a market activity. Um, I mean, what's the chance of that actually happening? I don't know. I, I think Bitcoin uh, deniers think it's pretty high, and Bitcoiners don't think it's high at all, right? So. Uh, I, I don't think it's very high. I think there's very there's very few ways that it plays out where it actually works out for governments and they can out coordinate Bitcoin. But no, I'm you know, I'm not we'll, saying it's I'm not saying it's gonna happen. I'm just saying like as long as mining is not corrupted, any attack on Bitcoin just puts a premium on private keys. Yeah, no, I I, I hear what you're saying, and when you say premium on private keys, like it, it puts a premium yes. on people are already holding, you know, who are holding those UTXOs and the keys to them. Exactly. Will Bitcoin be fungible in the future? I mean, I, I think that, I think we've seen that it's pretty clear that every, every place in the world, whether it's, um, you know, South Africa, whether it's, you know, different parts of the world, like every place that puts a India that puts a ban, you know, the seventh time on Bitcoin, whatever it may be, like all it does is drive the price up in that area. So it's just like, they're, they're, they're literally just paying a premium on, you know, whatever it is. So I do think the, uh, the question of fungibility is interesting that you bring that up right at the end, CK, because, um, you know, we have, we have the question about privacy, we have the question about coin joins, we have the question about, you know, anonymity in, in the Bitcoin blockchain which is uh, the, the time chain that is a uh, redefined time that is, uh, you know, our, you know, whatever it is. And so it's, uh, it's really interesting to think about like, you know, what, you know, what is that, you know, what, like, you know, it's, it's a big question. It's a big question of spending your money in something like this. How do you how do you go about this? 
Yeah, like well, every and decision the you make is kind of permanent. It, 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 it's this. We're talking about a technology that is going to outlive every single person that's on this Zoom chat. Like we're we're talking about something that's going to outlive all of us. So it's like, how are we going to go about like, you know, th this could be a, a huge thing. Obviously, I mean, what I mean, it could be. It's it a, is a huge it, thing. Obviously, yeah, yeah. it's a huge That's thing. That's why we're all mean, here, like, man. I just mean, like, what, like, the record of how we spend money and you know what is tied to us as individuals is going to be a big thing. You know, I think we need to take steps to, uh, you know, you know, as we grow as Bitcoiners to, you know, to learn about things and to do things that uh, change that. So. Adam, uh, you know, we, we keep on going back to government attacks and and worries about the government interference and, and what's the government's next step against against Bitcoin. And the United States government still hasn't uh, created a central bank digital currency yet. We still haven't got to that point. So I think that's a that's that's a point we are going to get to. So I think let's get there before we worry about certain aspects, because I think when the United States government and all and some of these other big governments out there come out with their central bank digital currencies, they're going to be doing pretty well for a while. They're going to be able to monitor all of these normies so much financially that, again, it will be a shield for Bitcoin. And they're, they're going to be able to, you know, we, we worry about hyperinflation and everything like that. With, with, the, with the central bank digital currency, they're, they're going to be able to play all sorts of negative interest rate games to further push along into the future all of the financial shenanigans they want to get get away with. So I, I do want to bring up that you know, people can worry as much as they want about the government, but they still haven't used that card yet, the uh, central bank digital currency, and, and no major country has done it yet. So I think um, you know, people worried about uh, hyperinflation. End of the. Do I don't think the dollar's going anywhere. I, I, there are a lot of tricks up the sleeve of the United States government and other governments, and I really expect a major one to be the, the central bank digital currencies, and they are going to be able to monitor. Everyone's going to opt into it, but you're going to be able to get your uh, your monthly check that way. What's it called? The, the your your Andrew Yang check. The, uh, your stimmy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Freedom, your freedom you check. Get your, your stimulus check. check and your vaccine, everything. Packed yeah, up. everything. You'll be, you'll know if you've been vaccinated through through there. And if you haven't been vaccinated, then no, you won't get your your Fed coin. But but, but we don't care about it. We, we we've got Bitcoin still, and there'll be so, all so, sorts of all sorts of trolls out there saying that clearly Fed coin is better than Bitcoin, and they can scream it to the rooftop. Bitcoin will still increase faster, it, 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 go away from Fed coin, but all the normies will be very happy because they're going to get their monthly check in. But, yeah. I'm sending it to Joe. Joe. I uh, I think the the first thing, I think that you're right, Adam. It's definitely terrifying to think about that uh, reality. Uh, but back to like CK's original question about fungibility, I think that today we saw um, the government uh, auction off some seized Bitcoin. So it goes back to show me that um, when you think about fungibility and the government is actually auctioning off Bitcoin, I think it makes us Bitcoin more legitimate and out of their control than ever. And uh, my theory is that we're going to see um, the U.S. government, as more big corners infiltrate uh, the ranks of federal government, uh, we're going to see more sympathetic uh, positions by the state, and it it will probably be worse before it gets better. But I am op a like eternal optimist, and I think that this is the way. And I think that we're going to have big like big corners in all ranks of government, and uh, it will be fungible. And um, I am like uh, betting on Bitcoiners if it's not fungible to fix this fucking problem. And uh, I think that we've already talked about some of those things through mixing and some of the KYC best practices. But um, my bet is on Bitcoiners infiltrating the state because fuck them and uh, also fixing the problem uh, through various te technological methods. So 
fungibility yeah <laughs> I mean, I haven't like okay. So you we we see chain analysis firms kind of like attack fungibility to some degree, but I haven't seen anything significant preventing like P two P Bitcoin from actually being sold. Even you know Bitcoin that was seized by the state just got sold today for a premium. So I don't know why they someone bought it for a premium. Well, like little, uh, little the Bitcoins has KYC now, but like Bisc emerged, you know, like. That's fucking crazy. And like nothing is preventing me from going to like Orange County Bitcoin meetup and selling a couple of Bitcoin to like one of the fucking wells there in Orange County, you know, like it's rad, man. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I agree. I, I haven't seen anything that to, to tell me that in, in in action, um, Bitcoin UTXOs are not bunchable. Um so you know, we're kind of getting to the end here. Uh, I, I kind of do want to, uh, you know, bring it back to, you know, what Adam was talking about CBDCs. Personally, my opinion on CBDCs is that, like, they haven't shipped yet, which is probably the biggest problem because where is Bitcoin going to be when they finally effing ship? <laughs> so I do not think that Bit. I don't think that CBDCs are going to be this like you know beacon of success for governments. I think governments are incompetent. Everything they've been doing has shown their incompetence and them trying to launch CBDCs in the face of Bitcoin is going to look like scammers trying to do an airdrop. So um, I'm not optimistic at all. I'm curious if any of you guys have thought about CBDCs. I mean, Adam, I know you think they're a big deal. Uh, Jacob, I see you nodding. Uh, I'm kind of curious who wants to jump in. Wait a second. It, they're going to they're gonna say, if you don't use our central bank digital currency, you're racist. And then everyone will use it. I mean, that's what everybody does today. They call you, 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 you use it. So, I mean, it's a mind game. It, it'll have success for them to control the masses even more. Financial success, no, no, no. It'll ruin people faster, but they don't want to be called a racist. So everybody else, I, I'll hear your opinion. You're right, Adam. You're right. Um, absolutely. And uh, the, the CBDCs, are they're, they're an extension of the inflation policies. Um they need CBDCs. They need CBDCs so that they can continue to print uh, without accountability. And that's why those products are in demand. I'm sure you guys, they're in demand. I, I, I disagree. I think CBDCs are an admission of defeat. Like once you condition people to get used to the idea of a cryptocurrency, like whatever that means, if you normalize it, like people are just gonna choose Bitcoin. Bitcoin is common sense. Yeah, I mean, Keep like, why, why would you, oh, sorry, why would you Justin. hold the central bank digital currency? It's the same thing as your dollar, but like, even worse. No, that's CBDC is in seconds, okay? BTC, it takes at least a half an hour. Um, no, BTC is not common sense. BTC is, is, is like being a monetary connoisseur. Um, we're all very, very lucky. No, I think it. I think it's going to be very much common sense in the in the the very near future. Keep it simple. I think when CBDCs uh, roll out, um, most many people won't know the difference, and so they'll have PayPal or they'll have their Venmo, or whatever, and um, it'll you know a balance will sit there, and maybe they'll buy Bitcoin, but they won't custody it. They probably most of them won't even want to. Hopefully, some of them do, and when they realize they can't, they'll figure out another way. I think um, I think CBDCs are very bad for uh, sovereignty for freedom. I think they're going to um, have their place for a little while. I hope they don't have. I hope they don't have a long life. I really don't, um, because I don't think it's going to be a um, cause I, I think that the, the, the people with the least amount of money are the ones that are going to be coerced into using them and they will be forced into using them and they will be the ones that are controlled, um, financially way more than anyone that holds Bitcoin or anyone that's even aware of these things. But those are the majority of the people are the people with less means than more means. Um, I, you know, um, I'm, I'm bullish Bitcoin 
And um, I don't like the CBDCs. I think they're an eventuality and hopefully they wake some people the fuck up. But you, you started this whole thing with a whole nother question and I was gonna comment on that. Before fungibility, CK, you said you were talking, what, do you remember what you asked? Bitcoin is fungible. Yeah. No, before no, that. No, before, before that. that. Yeah, no, I was, I was saying, like, are people going to run nodes? Are people going to, like, I, I think Bitcoin yeah. wins because so, of overwhelming decentralization, but are people going to keep it up? Yeah, so I um, I have family that had to flee a country with whatever they could put on their backs. Some of them had to, like, you know, leave on, like, they just have to walk across the border. Um, I know uh, in-laws I have that um, have memories of their entire wealth getting taken from them. Um, and these stories have gone you know, through generations. The people that live this stuff, they've gotten so comfortable in, in, in America and the cushy lifestyle, they don't give a shit about holding anything. So if, if one generation loses memory when they live something, it doesn't bode well for people having to put some effort into sovereignty. I'm bullish because I think that this Bitcoin will wake people up. I hope it does. But people that have lived some really shitty uh, situations where everything's taken from them, like they've lived getting their money and their wealth taken from them, they still don't care. So I hope that I hope that people wake up. I hope that you know everything that everyone here is doing to help people wake up um, you know is successful because it's important and it needs to happen. <clears throat> More people need to wake up. I tend to believe in humanity uh, and I hope that Bitcoin is a forcing function uh, to get people out of the, the fiat mindset, like give people so, a, a chance because, you know, they do currently live in the fiat world and operate on the fiat mindset. So maybe they could act differently in a Bitcoin world. Guys, this has been a great chat. We're going on two hours now and I think it's time to, uh, to wrap it up, to, to, to go for a last word. Um, this is a great time to, uh, you know, say whatever's on your chest, anything that you want, you've missed. Um, Jacob, I know you want to say something. So let's go with you first. All right, listen guys, it's, it's not a statement. It's a question, right? And I want you to think like very realistically, okay? The year is 2033, okay? Now, can you please tell me what you pay for a gallon of gasoline, what you pay for a handle bottle of gin, and what you pay for, say, a pound of ground beef. By the way, you must use dollars. No sats, no BTC. How many dollars are those things going to cost? Wait, what was the year? 2033. Oh, infinity on all of them. Because Every dollars won't exist by then. <laughs> at least double the current prices. I mean... It's just natural. At least double. <laughs> At least double. I, I, that's my concern. Double. At they least doubled double. since March 12th of last year. Well, not ground beef. I mean. Yes. Ground beef specifically has doubled since. It's a gallon of gas actually. will be at least 500 bucks. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Joe's way, shotgunning the last year. Way more, way more than that. <laughs> Get it, Jacob. Yeah, wait, Jacob. Long, long okay, long. Jacob, what is your last word and how do you want to end the question? Well, I mean, uh, Ju Justin said it for me. He said a, a gallon of gas is going to be at least 500 bucks. Guys, you know, we're trying to be bullish. We're talking about Bitcoin and, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe my, my support of the so called poo poo coins as the new equities um, is, is controversial in this crowd. But, guys, you're forgetting. Bitcoin is the money, okay? Bitcoin is the money and there's really probably only like 13 and at most 15 million Bitcoins remaining and or like actively out there in the world. And Justin is completely right. 2033, a gallon of gas is gonna cost at least $500 and probably more. Look at the money supplies. Look at the fact that the government has stopped publishing the money supplies. 
your dollar investments, unless you are a retiring boomer or a retired boomer, are completely screwed. Buy BTC as your money that you need to be durable, okay? Stocks are relatively safe. Poo-poo coins are safe compared to the dollar. Controversial All right. statement. All right. I mean, hey, you know, anything that can't be printed at will by bureaucrats is probably better than something that can be printed by will by bureaucrats. But I mean, if you can get into Bitcoin, why wouldn't you just do that, right? So um, the time for poo-poo coins might be in, 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 a, in a future where Bitcoin's already dominated. But from an per investment perspective, like, why would you buy anything else right now? Um, Jacob, appreciate you on the show. Appreciate you, you know, bringing a counter uh, perspective to the show. So, um, you know, the most important thing and what makes everyone a Bitcoiner is knowing that Bitcoin is money and, uh, you know, the, its meteoric rise is probably inevitable. Um, let's roll over to Adam. Adam, like I said, you're the man. I appreciate every time coming on your show. Thank you so much for coming on this show and, Bring in that just, just filter-free energy, just pure atom. I think uh, to, to sum up what Jacob said, the dollar is not for savings. Do not use it for savings. If it's it's going to be worth a lot less, we don't you know we don't need to get into the specifics. It is not your savings account. Bitcoin is the new savings account. Okay, and we're talking about S coins. Bitcoin. These dudes here, I've been doing TikToks for Coinbeast.com. They are only Bitcoin guys. Also, they're into just spreading the, the Bitcoin world. I'm at Bitcoin Meister on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Tech Vault. And guys, we're living in the golden age. This is such a great time to be freaking alive. Always keep it positive. If you're in the Bitcoin overlay and you're holding Bitcoin, there's going to be so many innovations in this decade. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. Let's fucking go. Smash that like button. We can pound curse on like this button. show, Adam. Yeah, pound that like button. We can curse on this show. Um, Kaz, what's your last word, my man? You know, uh, buy Bitcoin. That's about it. Just get in. Get off zero. I've Where can people enough. find you? Uh, go to Twitter. I'm BTC Bico. Uh, find me or not, doesn't really matter. I don't care. I more importantly care that you buy Bitcoin. So go to Swan Bitcoin or go anywhere and just please just fucking buy Bitcoin. That's more importantly. Anywhere that lets you get the Bitcoin. Literally, if you can just buy Bitcoin, it's more important than anything. That's literally the reason I'm here. That's the reason I'm here talking to you guys right now. The reason I have a podcast, the reason I work and do what I do, just so normal people can just get off zero and go buy Bitcoin. So just do it, right? St. Kaz, thank you for what you do, sir. Justin. Thank you. Yo, we need to hear more from you at Bitcoin Magazine. Uh, yo, I, I think we need to get some some Justin knowledge uh, on, on the dot com. So uh, hit us up after. But what is your last word, sir? Happy to do it, man. First of all, I never got to answer your uh, fungibility question. Bitcoin's al already fungible. It's just not fungible when you're coming back into the fiat system. So stay away from the fiat system. Buy yourself some Bitcoin. Learn about Bitcoin. Slow and steady wins the race. We're all trying to get to the finish line with as much Bitcoin as we can possibly have. However you can do that, make it happen. CK, I'm going to buy my ticket to Bitcoin 2021 right now. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. I'm the coach of Toshi, my man. Save that 10%. Keep it simple. Um, if anyone wants some free Bitcoin, the open dime I put in San Antonio, Texas has still not been uh, sweep. So go watch my video. <laughs> go get some free Bitcoin. It's gone up... Uh, I don't know, 40x since I did that. So I don't know how much is on there, but you know, a decent amount. Um, keep it simple, Bitcoin.com. I make uh, tutorials to help you interact with Bitcoin. 
hit me up if you have a request. Um, I just want to help people, you know, interact with Bitcoin, sovereign, private, safely, and uh, hold your own keys. That's, you know, just respect Bitcoin, respect yourself. That's it. Thanks for having me. Let's fucking go. Keep it simple. Please come anytime. Uh, big fan of your work. And if you want to learn anything about Bitcoin, odds are keep it simple. It's made a guide already. And uh, that's probably the best place to go. So check it out. Joe, close this out, my man. Okay, everyone. Thank you for joining. It's been a hell of a night. Uh, I didn't agree with everybody and that's okay. Uh, but I think that we agreed on a lot of things too, which is also awesome. Um, I think the message here is, uh, you know, take your sovereignty seriously. Um, you know, buy Bitcoin, hodl your own Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, it's a journey. So anyway, with that being said, guys, enjoy yourself. Gals, enjoy yourself. And uh, auto on and let's go to 200K by uh, Bitcoin 2021. 200K by conference day. Let's stay hovering. Let's do Peace. it.